SwiftUI lets us attach custom gestures to any view. Then use the values created by those gestures to manipulate the rest of our views. To demonstrate this, we're going to attach a drag gesture to our card view, so we moved around the screen. And we'll also use the values made by that gesture to control the opacity and rotation of the view. It'll curve away and fade out as it's dragged. This takes surprisingly little code, because SwiftUI does so much for us. I think you'll be really impressed. First, over in our card view, let's add a new at state property here to track how far users drag this card. We'll say here, at state private var offset is CG size dot zero. So no drag by default. Next, we're gonna attach three modifiers to our card view placed directly below this frame modifier here. Remember the order in which you apply modifiers matters. And nowhere does more true than working with offsets and rotations. Think about it. If you rotate, then offset, then the offset is applied based on the rotated axis of your view. For example, if you move something 100 pixels to the left, then rotate 90 degrees, you would see it's moved 100 pixels to the left and rotated 90 degrees. But if you rotate 90 degrees first, then move 100 pixels to its left, you end up moving something 90 degrees first and then directly down the way. Its angle has changed. Its concept of left got rotated. Now, where things get doubly tricky is when you factor in how SwiftUI creates new views by wrapping modifiers. When it comes to moving and rotating, this means we want to have a view slide directly to true west, regardless of what orientation it has, while also rotating it, we've got to put the rotation first and then the offset. Now, our offset width will contain how far the user dragged our card. We don't want to use that for our rotation because the card would spin way too quickly. So instead, we'll get a little bit. We'll get like one fifth of the drag amount. So bef before on tap, I should directly have to frame here. I'll say there's a rotation effect and we'll rotate by degrees the double of our offset width, like that, in fact, not even double required here, sorry, not even put there, our offset width divided by five. So just one fifth of our thing. That's why double's required, I'm being silly. It doesn't know what I mean, let's try 5.0. There we go, that's much happier. <laughs> um, so we're saying just take one fifth of my offset amount here. Next we're going to apply our movement so the card slides relative to the horizontal drag amount. Again, we're not gonna use the original value of offset.width to require the user to drag a very long way to get any meaningful results. So instead, we're gonna multiply this by five. So cards we swiped away with very, very small gestures. And so we'll say here, below our rotation effect, let's apply an offset where X is the offset width multiplied by five. Make it a bigger, bigger movement for a smaller gesture. Now, while we're here, I wanna add one more modifier based on this drag gesture. We're gonna make the card fade out as it's dragged further away. The calculation for this takes a little bit of thinking, and I really wouldn't blame you if you wanna spin this off into a method rather than try and put it in line here. Here's how it works. First, we're gonna take 1 50th of the drag amount so the card doesn't fade out too quickly. Make it a really slow fade out. Second, we don't care whether they've moved to the left or to the right, doesn't matter. The left will be negative numbers and the right's positive numbers. We don't care either way. So we're gonna put our value through the abs function, ABS. Now, this function is given a positive number, it returns the same number. When it's given a negative number, it removes a negative sign and therefore returns the same value as a positive number. Then we'll use that result, subtract from two. Now, the use of two here is intentional 
because it allows the card to stay opaque while being dragged a little bit. So the opacity is like two here, 1.5, one, so fully opaque still, and that goes further, and then it becomes transparent. So when it's not dragged at all, it's two, a little bit, it's one, you have further than 50 points left or right, then we subtract that from two. So it means the card's fully opaque in the center, but beyond 50 points left or right, we start to fade out the card until 100 points left or right, the opacity is zero. Again, 1 50th of the movement value. And so here, below the previous two modifiers, I'm gonna say we have an opacity of two minus the double of the abs of our offset dot width divided by 50. So a fraction of it taken away from uh, two. So we've made a property that will store the drag amount. And we've used three modifiers down here that all change the way the view is being rendered. What remains now is the most important part. We're we'll actually attach a drag gesture to our card to update offset as the user drags the card around. Drag gestures have two useful modifiers of their own. They need to attach functions to be triggered when the gesture is changed, so that we're called every time they move their finger, and also when the gesture is ended, when they lift their finger off the screen. Both these functions are handed to the current gesture state to evaluate. In our case, we're gonna read the translation property to see where the user's dragged to. And we'll also use that to set our offset property. But you can read the start location, the predicted end location, and more. When it comes to the ended function, we'll be checking whether the user moved it more than 100 points in either direction. So we can prepare to remove the card. If they haven't though, only a small drag will set offset back to zero. So we'll add a new gesture modifier just below the previous three modifiers here. We'll say as a gesture like this with a drag gesture inside. And when this thing is changed, give me the gesture coming in and we'll set our offset to be gesture.translation. When it's ended here, we can ignore the value coming in. If the value are drag so far is greater than 100, positive or negative, then we will remove the card. So we'll say here, if the absolute value of our offset width is greater than 100, then we'll remove the card. Obviously more code to come later on. Otherwise, we'll set offset back to zero. The card was not removed. Let's give it a try. Let's press Command R and run it back. We should find our cards will move, rotate, and fade away as they're dragged. Let's find out. There we go. Boom. Very nice, you can see it's fading away. It stays opaque in the very middle. So this whole area here is fully opaque. Yet 50 points of either side movement to be fully opaque. Notice the way the card moves further than my actual cursor does as well. That's because that multiplies in there. And it fades out neatly as you get really, really far away like that. And when I release, boom, it snaps back to the middle again. Go too far, it will just go away like that. So you're very far away, it's just gone. <laughs> it just disappears like that we aren't doing anything here. So that's a comment here saying remove the card like that. This works well, uh, but to really finish the step, we've got to fill in this whole remove the card comment so the card's actually removed in the parent view. Now, we don't want our card view to try and call up to content view and manipulate this data directly because that causes spaghetti code. Instead, a much better idea is to store a closure parameter inside our card view. They can be filled with whatever code we want to later on. It means we have the flexibility to get a callback in our content view without explicitly tying the two views together. And so we'll add a new property to our card view up here, below card. So this one here, the one below it here, this is called removal. And it'd be a function that accepts no params and returns void. Um, it's in op optional and nil by default. So we take no parameters, send nothing back, 
and default to nil. We don't have to provide it unless it's explicitly needed. And now we can replace this remove the card comment here with a call to that closure. We can call removal. It's optional, it might not be there, so I'll call question mark, open and close parens. That means uh, the closure is only called if it's actually been set with a value. And now back in our content view, we can write a method to handle removing a card, then connect that to the closure. So over in content view here, let's make a method here that takes an index in our cards array and removes the item. So I'll say down, oops, Daisy, remove the breakpoint. Down here, we have func remove card at index and int. We'll call cards that remove at that index, like so. And finally, we can update the way we create our card view. We use trailing closure syntax to remove the card when it's dragged more than 100 points. This is just a matter of calling the remove card at method we just wrote. But if we wrap that inside with animation call, then the other cards will automatically slide upwards. So up here in our little for each here, you can see we're making our card view right here. I'll pass in that trailing closure and say when this is triggered with animation, call remove card at whatever index we have right now. Go ahead and run the code again. Hopefully it should look great. I'll drag it off, remove it, and they all just slide up like so with some nice Xcode error appearing down here. But you can see it's looking very nice. Boom. As more and more get removed, the cards are running out slowly. So the last one is gone.